What's happening, Disc Golf World? Welcome to the first round of the 2021 Northwest Arkansas Open. My name is Luke Humphreys. This event is sponsored by Dynamic Discs of Northwest Arkansas and Fayette Chill, the clothing company. Go visit them at fayettechill.com. Sit next to me, Zachariah Johnson. How we doing? He's the man from Missouri. How we doing, Lukey? Not bad, dude. We're in Arkansas. This is the last event of the season, man. It's cold. It's windy. Got a pretty good card, too. Yeah, somewhere in the 40s or 50s out there this morning slash evening. Probably Very windy. 20 mile an hour winds. Yes. Very gusts. Yeah, f- sustained all the time. Yeah. Never really let off. Yeah. We've got a, a local on the card as well as three Midwest killers. Starting with a wide open hole one, Zach. What are players doing here? Man, the drive is actually a little more particular than it looks. It's wide open field off the uh, beginning here, but the approach is very specific. I mean, if you're a sidearm player, you're going to want to set up on the, the sidearm approach. If you're a backhand player, you want to get more left and get more of an open look at it. Tricky hole yeah. to start with. Yeah, it's going to be really windy. Looking to, to get some distance and not pinch yourself off too close to that tree line. Right, and then a little OB here in the creek line, as you see, as we cross here. You can catch some players if you don't get across clean. That's right. You'll see the conditions now. Here we go. We are live. Matt Lloyd. With a 1 p.m. Tea time. Can we just throw this out there? He has one of the First best the announcement Nico voices off the box. For sure. He's always into it. Doesn't matter if you're the first card out or the last card out. No. Full of energy. Yep. Weather could be good or bad. His voice is always strong. Pretty rocking shirt from Nico here. I kind of like it. He's got some sick kicks on, too. So we really can't tell the wind here, but when we played, it was a pretty strong tail left, right. That's a good one. Perfect. On the left side. Yeah, you're going to have a wide open look from that angle there. This is our local guy. Yeah, Blake Bailey. Highest rated player in the area. He's a big, tall guy. You know, he can generate some power just based on physics. We'll see what he's got. I've never watched him play before. In the same boat. It's like he's got the whip. A lot of distance on that. Got the full ride. He's on the right side. We'll see what he can do from there. It's going to be a little trickier. Joel. Freeman. Yeah, that right side's really tough. You don't really see the basket. Tough spike, hyzer, uh, flick approach. Yeah. Joel coming off a great year. Three top tens in the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Top five at the USDGC. He's just really close to that breakout win. And oh. He's got that one turned over, uh, but uh, it looks like it's coming back. Yeah. Whew, I, that, that was scary there for a second, man. I didn't know if it was going to check up or not. No, he definitely turned it over. The Lots of distance, though. Time, Kyle Klein. All right, the whiz kid from Michigan, he had a fantastic year. Yeah, this is the young gun, man. He's out here slinging, shooting well this year, really coming out hot. Yeah. Fun to watch. He's not the dark horse anymore. No, sir. Comes in as one of the favorites every time. Highest rated player in the tournament. He just throws it. A little shorter, but giving himself a better angle over there on the left side. He'll be first to play. A little low and left, but as you can see, wide open look here at the basket. I mean, perfect. Wow. Can you say anything? Man, that was so good. Flipped it to flat, let the wind do the work. This is downwind that they're playing right now. Nico going with the Cenus, it looks like, in his hand there. Also playing it really well. Mm. Touch shorter, though. Mm-hmm. Still in great shape. Opting for the, the Thummer here, looks like. Yeah. Yes. Local. Yeah, so the wind there is making it a little tough. Hard to tell if that got across. I'm pretty sure he ended up back long right of the basket. I happened to see him while I was on my card finishing 18. Joel's going grenade. That's also a cross, a little short left. Yeah, so, I mean, from Joel's position, that's pretty much the only shot if you want to attack. Just 
Just chipping it up for par there. Mm-hmm. I love to see that the grenade is more of a used shot as time goes on. Yeah, it really has become one. Right. Kevin, Eagle. Yeah, right. It's not just a specialty shot by one person anymore. You see it a lot more often out there. You see different variations of it, too. Correct. As you can see, the trees in the background. It's a pretty windy day out there. Big one to start your round yes, with. Yes, sir. That'll get the momentum rolling right. Hitting a good putt. Good birdie on hole one. Not an easy hole to get. No, not at all. I think any putts outside 25 feet today, guys, are, are going to feel like bonuses to these players. Even in the, the woods here, a lot of the leaves gone with how high the winds have been in this area lately. So not much cover anywhere. And then if they're out in the open, it's ripping. Absolutely ripping and relentless. It never gave up. It wasn't a gusty type of day. It was just steady. So you got two birdies on the hole there, two pars. So we're headed into hole two. A couple different ways to play this one straight up the gut. That's what we're flying with the drone right here. Players will play a putter mid-range, something to slide along this ground. There's also a hyzer route, Zach. Correct. So you'll see players throw a pretty overstable fairway, um, sometimes a distance driver, but they'll just hang it out right, let it crash back at the basket left. Usually sticks the ground pretty well. Philo Castro looks like he's lining up that hyzer here. He's going to be the wind read for the rest of his card. Drop on it. Pass. Looks pretty good. Um, looks like he maybe got tangled up a little short there in the... Shrubbery, but still good. Yeah, not bad. Need to keep the height late on uh, just barely clipped it, but inside the circle. Oh, definitely right there for the birdie. Kyle yeah. going with the low route. On a day like this, I like it. Oh, my gosh. Good filter off the tree there. Yeah. And I agree with that because of the wind. It, it takes a lot of the wind out of the play there. Mm -hmm. Smart shot from Kyle. Yeah, looks like we're going to see the local man, Blake, doing the same. Good looking shot, just a little left. Yeah, also left, but also pushing through. Both of those guys are gonna have putts after sliding through left side. Joel, it's gonna, it's gonna be in those tester range though, with the the distance and the wind. Hundred percent. Also opting up the middle. Mm. Not getting as much sneak as the other guys with that glow whale, but looks like he's got himself something. We'll see what he's got. Yeah, gave it a good look, just asking it to stay up right out of his hand. Felt like he knew it wasn't in. Yeah, on a on a park style course like this, each one of these birdies that you have a chance at and don't get feels a little bit like a lost opportunity. So we see Blake jam one. That's a nice putt from a knee. Wouldn't necessarily call this course birdie or die, but there's gonna be a ton of opportunities for birdie. Nice putt from Kyle as well. Yeah. You're going to have looks if you're throwing it well on nearly every hole, but that doesn't mean you can't get yourself in some trouble. There is some penalizing rough out here. Correct. Tight fairways, rough bunkers. Nico starting off two for two. A couple good spinners. He played well here last year. Took Chris Clemens all the way to hole 18. Or Chris Clemens, the eventual champion, won it. But Nico knows these courses well, plays them well, and he's off to a good start. All right, moving on to hole three. Big thanks to Swarm Digital Marketing for sponsoring this drone coverage. They design, develop, and maintain websites. So if you're a small business owner that needs a website or work, give them a call. Mention GK Pro Disc, and you'll get a free consultation. Thank you, Swarm. This is going to be a big hyzer, Zach. Yeah, you'll see a lot of players just swing the overstable high-speed driver at this. Um, with the wind today, uh, a lot of players tend to opt over the right side of the trees. Keep it on a one-plane move the whole way. Right. Not try and flex it. That window's getting smaller and smaller, though. Correct. I think the tall guys almost have a problem at this point. Little tickle there. Oh, right on the dance floor. The redirect. Perfect. It could have been 
perfect either way. There's multiple ways to do this, but that tick didn't hurt him at all. Not even a little bit, to be honest. He looked good right out of his hand. Kyle much wider, does fight through. That'll be a circle two look for him. Deep in the circle two. Trees are 90% air in the fall. Man. I heard a local tell me all these trees had leaves on them last week. They had some devastating winds in the area as well as two different rainstorms. So, Any of those leaves that were barely holding on are gone now. The local going up the gut a little too tight. That's the one to beat. And uh, that's 110 out. That's a, that's a pitch up in these winds. Yeah, thankfully he filtered through to the front side, so should be pretty easy. Joel also challenging the same tree. <clears throat> All these guys having problems with the height. The wind playing straight downwind, I think, was crucial in them uh, not being able to sustain that height. Blake giving it a good bid from distance, keeping it close. Solid run. Joel knew right out of his hand. Wasn't happy with that one. Pretty long look out here in the wind. Mm. Looks like it's a still pocket at the moment, though. True. I guess those leaves by Bob over there, the catch can, they are moving, though. So some wind on the green. Good backboard there to help him stay on the green, not filter into the trees there. Yeah, it's short ones just like that. Our players are going to need to pay attention to. They can sneak away from you in the wind real quick. Each fraction that your disc is off is magnified by that wind. Looks like everybody's cleaning up the pars before Nico even gets the chance to putt for birdie here. That's an awesome feeling. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. Three for three to start. A hot start. Little turkey gobbler there from Nico. He had a, a nice long putt. He had a little shorty, and then he just had to tap in. That's the way to do it. Working himself down, playing as the hardest hole on the course now. Hole four. Par four. This one's savage. I mean, the roughs are rough. The fairway's tight. And then a little bit of wind pushing right up. It made it even harder. Yeah. Players are looking to... Probably play safe. You don't see people attack it very often. Putter mid-range. That's probably what they're going with here. Just looking to lay it in the fairway and give themselves an upshot for that three. Yeah, any season pro is just going to be looking to land in the middle here and attack on that second shot. Nico buttering up what looks like a mid-range. That's a great little kick right there. Keeps him right where he needs to be. Some course love there. Kyle on the logic. Just looks like he maybe missed the angle early off the bat. Didn't really get it out there to break over right. It's going to be a tough scramble. It's a little faster disc from Blake. Oh, my gosh. That might be the worst filter. You definitely don't want to be over there. Mm. Looked like it kicked it left and it flew. There is barbed wire about 20 feet off the fairway. Maybe close to it. There Come on. I see Joel get over on that. It's fighting. He's got a good forehand game, you know, straddle out something. He'll have yeah. an option from there. Not ideal, but he'll definitely be still in a tackable position. It's like Blake's safe, but... Yeah. Looked like he went quite a bit deeper than that. It's not too terrible right there. We'll see where Kyle ended up now. Oh, oh no. He's just looking to get back out to the, the short grass. That's all he could do. Mission successful. Let's see what he does here. Still up. Look like some slip. Whoa. K 
Okay, that must have been some limb action. Yeah, a little bit of wind bounce into limb bounce. Mm. Bogey at best now if he can pitch up and right. get up and down. See Joel lining up this flexing sidearm. Yeah, it looks like a gator from him. Wow. Keep turning. That is wow. so good. Joel Freeman just absolutely chopping up that shot perfect. That's yeah, something that he specifically fits well for his game. That shot kind of fell into the Anheuser flex, which he plays perfectly. Yeah, that angle is one of his uh, fortes for sure. Oh, look at that. Another good tree limb there for Nico. That disc was dancing, man. Yes, it was. Lots of air bounces on the way. So from where Blake pitched out to. Oh, great, my gosh. Great shot. Whoa, sneaking long on him. Yeah. That's some good golf, though, though. Mm. He just chopped it up, stayed in the middle, played for the up and down. That's smart from Kyle. That's about all you can do there. He could have tried to get fancy with it. Maybe cost himself one that's. You get a little longer than I realized. Definitely obstructed, unfortunate. Yeah, these these roughs, man, they're tough. Yeah, after such a nice shot. Looks like that disc is a, a little bit wider rim, though. Did get the slide because of it. Joel tapping in the birdie. Yeah, bit of a slow start for Joel. Yeah, Nico Grab to keep it in. rolling at four down. What a start. His last two have been tap-ins. Some golf right there. I honestly, you know, I got there, I saw the wind. I didn't really think anybody was going to super shred this course, so it's surprising to me that Nico is starting so good. But maybe our hardest birdie for these players right here in hole five, very uh, just very specific shot it asks for zach yeah it's really weird it says 368 but it feels like it plays closer to 400 it's interesting you know you pull out a fairway driver you end up short um you pull out a distance driver and it's just touchy it's really hard to get this this angle and this shot right if you hit early right and kick left or just early release left there's a lot of uh pitch outs and, and not much distance going to be accrued next shot that's a stiletto from Nico. It's like he's just going old school Nico here with the flexing shot. Just trying to keep it up in the middle. He knows he can commit to that Anheuser line. Done it before. Giving himself a shot. I think yeah. birdie ops on this hole is really all you're asking for. Something in circle two. Correct. Especially with the wind moving through that tunnel the way it does. And Joel's playing this shot here. That's a glow leopard three, I believe. And that's how it's played. Flip to flat. Almost no fade out of that disc. He threw that perfectly. Kyle's just drifting a touch right. Looked like it was tugged four feet out of the hand, but hey, hey there. Pops out through the woods. Great turn of events for Kyle, and he'll have a circle's edge bit for Birdie. It's a good pull. Just drifted a little on him. Like a, a Barry Schultz beast out of Blake, and that's exactly where we were saying yeah. you do not want to be. And that's probably Bogeyville. To scramble from there would be almost better than birdie. And as you can see, he's just taking his medicine. We're five holes in. Not even a, a completed fifth hole yet. We've already seen two or three players pitching out. I feel like that's the name of the game of this course. Um, it, it can be easy if you're hitting the lines, but, man, if you're missing, you're looking at bogeys pretty quickly. Nico to keep it rolling, five for five. 
It was close. Just didn't quite have enough steam on it. Kyle with the edge of the circle look. Mm. Great putt from him. Basket catches it well. A little stick high left. Nice birdie. And you'll see he'll clean up his uh, bogey there. Joel, after that beautiful drive, getting past the basket, rarely see it. Joel's getting the ball rolling here, two in a row. Yeah. After the slow start. Yeah. Honestly, the, the two hardest in the first three. Right. Five, excuse me. You take a quick look in. Andrew Presnell, six under through nine holes. He's coming in with, I think, three or four wins in a row, possibly more. Been on a little late season hot streak. Jake Hebenheimer, five under for the day. Zach Johnson, the guy sitting next to me, a little seven under, top in the clubhouse at the moment. Yeah, I was a second card out, you know, had an early run on it, put in a solid score. It was cool out there, though. You played in a little bit colder conditions than these guys are dealing with now. Just a touch. It was cold all day for the most part, though. Hole six, this little mid-range putter shot hallway with a creek past the basket. Doesn't really come into play as there's a little backstop up to the green. Just get this thing on the ground with some hyzer angle. Let it slide up. Yes, sir. I think Joel's pulling out the chariot. I could be wrong. Nope, it's the whale. That looks very whaley. It was definitely the whale. Also a bit inside. He's got a great long jump, rate, jump putt range. So we'll see if he utilizes that there. Not what he wanted. This one feels like a very stock shot for these caliber of players. Basic flat forward shot. This looks perfect. Yes, sir. I believe that was the logic there from Kyle. Yeah, I can't do it much better. Nico's calling for it to sit, but I think it's going to be perfect. Yes, oh, yeah. right on top of it. Back-to-back, -back, nice shots. Blake's seen a couple good lines now. See if he can repeat. Going beat up Rock. Places it on a nice hyzer. Oh, look at that. All the way up there. Gorgeous. And as you said, this is a pretty stock shot for our pros here. Joel getting caught up early on the corner there. Not one to mess with uh, the fast green water behind smart layup from him. He'll drop a shot to the card as these guys have like 10 foot birdie putts. That's what you want to do. So Nico with a very hot start here. Five through six. Yeah. With a look too on mm -hmm. the hole that he missed. Yep. He's definitely throwing the disc amazing off the box. That stuff is amazing. I just want to say that. If you haven't gotten yourself some of that double G jerky, you're missing out. It's a power snack. In the middle of a round, you're hungry, you need some energy, you pull out the double G jerky, yep. you're set. Yeah, birdie, birdie fuel right there. All right, hole seven. We're looking at a left to right moving shot that's pretty unique. You've got to navigate around this, these like two by tens. 
Yeah, it's a man-made structure to take away the straight shot for sure. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We've got a downwind right to left, kind of beating these discs down, not letting them get full flights, but Kyle judged that perfectly. Yeah, so he didn't show the wind very well on that, but typically any turnover shot on this hole is going to get beat down by this strong right to left out there. Yeah, that was a stable mid-range from him. And he had the angle perfect. Nico's going to follow it up, though. Cruised out, so he's going to have a, a headwind bid from there. Two really great backhands and a crosswind. Blake looking to follow both of those lines. Cuts it tighter. Looking for it to flex out, but that one just too much Anheuser out of the hand. That'll be a very tricky putt from there. Any, anything out in this field, Zach? Yeah, it's uh, outside 25, you know. Bonus today. Bonus. Joel, fantastic committing to different angles on that forehand. I'm glad Joel so showed us the sidearm line there. Yeah. And it does typically filter about to circle's edge. It's hard mm -hmm. to park this with a sidearm. It's almost impossible. Blake looking for a big one to get the ball rolling under par. It's a tough one to run. Especially in the wind. You don't want any comebackers. Let's see how good Joel can judge this breeze. Perfectly. Yes, sir. Didn't need any chains. Played out perfectly for Joel. A little sidearm to a putt. Mm-hmm. All right, so the breeze looks like it did die. This guy's not dealing with the conditions they threw in. Yeah, it was extremely windy for the most part out here in this open. Mm-hmm. But there were pockets of still. These guys making good use of it. Right there, you can see it, the wind back for Blake's putt. Had that little bit of still, man, while they were putting it, made it all easy for him. Not to say they wouldn't have gotten it, but heading into one of the hardest birdies on the day, hole eight, playing 422 and playing all of it, Zach. Yeah, I mean, it's a stretch sidearm if you have it, uh, a really specific backhand turnover with the left to right crosswind that was going on today. And then you got OB tucked up 15, maybe 20 foot behind it. Real maybe. tough hole. Yeah, and more like 15. Yeah, 15, maybe 10, actually. Makes it hard to run those long putts. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of guys land near the mouth and then have a look, but it's going to be a dicey look if you run it. Yeah. That was a, an accidental layup to... Pretty good position. A throller, would you? <laughs> I would. I think we'd have to. I think even Kyle would have to agree there. Not what he wanted, but not the worst. Yeah, this is a hole you're not really going to lose anything with par. Right All right. Looked like Nico's disc was going to find that tree line, but the headwind left to right that talking about just didn't let his disc get very far joel he's got a huge forehand this requires a massive forehand we'll see what he's got great follow through if this can just push 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 oh look at that roll <laughs> great look. roll oh my gosh a shot there from joel just a bonus 20 feet that put him into scoring position right there that 20 feet matters today Correct. Matters every day, but on a windy one like this. Exponentially matters. Our boy Blake's opting for the backhand. Just fading out early. Looking for it to hit and drop that. It's going to be a tricky position, I'd guess. Yeah, up and down is going to be tough if you got any kind of penetration into the woods there. Kyle's got to concentrate on this one. Don't want to give away a stroke on a hole like this. It's leaking right. Exactly pin high. 
It's a tester putt, but he can earn it. All right. Nico just doing that little spinny boy run, trying to keep it away from that OB right behind it. A little baby run. Oh, so he didn't get too far in there. He has an opportunity to get up and down here pretty easy. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, here's Joel with the birdie look. To pick one up. Oh, that's a tough break. Joel has a pretty solid round going. I feel like if that falls, it really gets the ball rolling. Huge bonus birdie there. Kyle grinding out that par. Yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> as you can see, I'm stuck to all the stickers. Thorns <laughs> and vines. They call it the natural state for a reason. Arkansas, very natural. Natural OBs. Yep. Just a little tap out for Blake, and we will head to the last hole on this front nine. Tricky little hole here, but also easy. It's only 215 foot, but don't let that fool you. The OB is directly behind it with a back slope into the creek here. And if you sneak long OB, the return putt is not necessarily a give me. No, definitely isn't. Anything that lands past about 10 feet short of this basket is kicking OB. Right, you definitely want to slide this one up there from short to... Just as you see Kyle do there. Yep, that's perfect. Landed about 20 short. Ends up about 10 long. We were watching a little coverage yesterday, and you told me Nico with a Cenus in his hand on a shot like this, it just feels like it's exactly what he should be playing. Yeah, I mean, when Nico pulls out the Cenus, I feel like it's going to be a pretty controlled within 25-foot shot every time. Just a little flip whale from Joel. Great touch. Slow down. He's right there for the birdie look. Yeah, didn't scoot too far. This is pushing a little straight, but that's perfect speed. Well done from the local Blake. Blake looking for to get that birdie to get under par here. Yeah. All right, Nico to go seven under through the front nine. Wow. As we said before, this is a park-style course where birdies are very available, but mm. they're not easy. No. And Nico's out here shredding that front nine. Joel with a solid bird as well. Yep. Kyle just a little tap in. A little bag putt. We'll see the same from Blake. And that's an all-star to finish out our front nine coverage. That's the way you want to do it. Let's check out these guys' cards like we said, and you saw Nico LaCastro playing super clean. Picking up seven of the first nine birdies. Joel Freeman also got a bogey-free round going. He and Kyle playing a little slower pace than Nico, but still a good pace to have today. Right, Kyle's in there. He just had that one hiccup of a bogey there to slow him down. Yeah. As we see, Andrew Presnell, eight under through 12 holes. He is on the hottest pace of anybody today. You're seven under in the clubhouse. While it's still good, it's looking like it's not going to be the best of the day few guys a bunch of holes left a bunch of birdie holes left sick grenade slow-mo from gabe over at gk it's been a pleasure being with you guys today big thanks to dynamic discs northwest arkansas and fayette chill for sponsoring this coverage for zach johnson i'm luke humphreys come join us for the back nine